Recording in progress.
Eu não faço nada, não faço nada. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bia Barbosa. I'm a journalist. I work with freedom of expression and platforms regulation. And I'm a member of the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. This session aims to provide an overview of the activities developed uh, by the CGI, the Internet, uh, the Internet Steering Committee in Brazil, within the scope of the Gender and Diversity Agenda, a project that has been uh, implemented since 2021 in Brazil. The agenda, like the committee, has a multi-stakeholder nature and aims to promote gender and ethnic racial diversity in the IT sector and the internet governance ecosystem. In Brazil, as many parts of the world, the debate on the importance of digital inclusion and the role of the internet for social and economic development are well established and guide a long list of initiatives. It's known that the technology advancement can represent improvements in many aspects of our lives as education and medical access. On the other hand, there are many but not enough initiatives aimed at dealing concretely with the internet potential for reproducing and deepening inequalities. Just to, represent some, just to present you some data from Brazil, we have more women than men in the population. We are 52% and 52% percent as well of the women then declare themselves as black and brown women. However, their participation in almost all sectors, productive and public activities is notably smaller. Considering Brazilian population in 2020, only 10% of Brazilian women in university are enrolled in science, technology, engineering and mathematics programs versus almost one third uh, of the men. Careers in Brazil are also marked by gender inequalities when observing the low number of women hired in the science, mainly in medicine, engineering and technology. In this sense, the Gender and Diversity Agenda seeks to encourage the participation of women, Afro-descendants, indigenous people and other historically excluded social groups, not only for internet usage, but also for the development and research of digital technologies. So I would like to explain before we listen uh, to, before I gave the floor to our speakers to present the challenges in our, the process of building our agenda. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. So could you please uh, put the PPT here? Yeah, thank you so much. So, uh, the internet governance model in Brazil uh, is, uh, we have an uh, internet steering committee that is made by 21 members, nine of them are from the governmental sector, four from the corporate sector, four from the third sector, the civil society, I am one of them, on, on one of these representatives, three from the scientific and technology community, and one internet expert. The CGI has uh, its nine members from the government appointed by the government uh, each three years for a mandate of three years. And the 11 other members are uh, elected by uh, a, a very democratic process um, for this mandate of three years. The mission of the CGI is to coordinate and integrate internet services in Brazil, promote technical quality, innovation and dissemination of the use of internet services. We recommend standards for technical and operational procedures. We establish strategic directives for the use and development of the internet. And it's on this uh, mandate that we are developing this gender and diversity agenda. We also promote studies and technical standards for network and internet security. We coordinate the allocation of internet address, the IPs, and registration of domain names under the cctld.br. Promote specialized research on the use of ICT and collect, organize, and disseminate information on internet services, including the production of indicator and statistics. I'm going to put yeah, the agenda on gender and diversity is one initiative that emerged in on November 21 
based on the principles for the international governments and use in Brazil, mainly the principles universal universality, diversity, freedom, privacy, and human rights. The initiative was proposed and led by the women councillors from the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. We are only four women in 21 members in the committee. Uh, and this initiative seeks to keep up with the debate on the participation of groups historically excluded from ICT and propose actions to contribute to the reduction of digital inequalities and their impacts in society. Uh, we have a working group that have been developing a lot of initiatives beside the building and the, the construction of this agenda. Uh, we have, publish, uh, have been publishing annual publications. We are in at this moment uh, editing the number three of it on ICT, Internet Governance and Gender and Race and Diversity. We, organized a web, we have organized a seminars on diversity and equity in the ITC sector in Brazil. And also a main session at the Brazilian Internet Governance Forum this year uh, on diversity and gender in ICT. Uh, the idea of building a gender and diversity agenda is to promote awareness of the importance of the digital inclusion supported by equity and equality between different parts of the society. And also to encourage actions to reduce inequalities in areas related to internet and ICT with regard to the use, research and development of technologies. Uh, to build this agenda, we have organized three national workshops in Sao Paulo, Brasilia, and Recife, and one internet, uh, sorry, one an international workshop online, and also we are considering this activity here in the IGF as part of this international consultation to investigate the main challenges for the inclusion of women and other excluded groups in ICT in Brazil. All the workshops were multi-stakeholder and attended a specific methodology to achieve a collective construction. So here, an idea of the numbers of the participants of each workshop uh, and uh, the challenge that uh, we could able to develop together uh, with the participants. We have one of them here with us, Fernanda, that took part of, part of one of the uh, workshops in Sao Paulo. Um, the, the members uh, were able to uh, fill up our online form, working groups, and then we had uh, many open debates to prioritize the challenges for this agenda. And the methodology, uh, we work with multi stakeholders, as I mentioned before, uh, of women from different regions from Brazil, with racial and ethnic, uh, ethnic diversity, and also with people with disability and from the LGBTQIA uh, community. Uh, we organize small groups for discussions also and plenary the question, what are the main challenges for promoting gender, equality and diversity in ICTs? So, after uh, putting this question, presenting this question to the participants, we were able to get a list of 13 challenges and 248 proposals of, on how to face them. And the idea of this uh, open forum here in, in IGF is to share with you uh, 10 of these challenges at the end we uh, we're try, we try to, to uh, get a list of 10, not 13. And then the idea is to present you these challenges and, and explain how we were working uh, to uh, conclude this process with uh, prioritizing also the proposals to present this agenda for Brazil, of course, because it has something to do with our reality, but we think that is an agenda that is possible to be implemented and followed by other countries as well. That's why we are here to listen and learn from you and share this, this experience with you as well. So to move forward to present you the challenge, I will pass the floor now to, uh, I'm sorry, Gabriela Nadji. <laughs> a lot of, Ah, she's going to start. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you changed the order. Okay. So, uh, I'm so sorry. Where is Laura here to present her well? So, Laura is my colleague as well as a civil society representative in the Internet Steering uh, Committee. And, oh my God, I don't have Laura's presentation here. What happened to me? 
Laura is a mother. She likes to be presented like that. She's a social scientist and has been working with internet policy since 2007. And in 2018, she participated in International Visitor Leadership Program offered by the United States Department of State. And like me, as I mentioned, she's a civil society representative on the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Laura, please, you have 10 minutes for your presentation. She's online. <laughs> Can you connect her? Can you hear us, Laura? We see you in the room. She needs to be allowed to speak. That's what oh, she's okay. saying to us. Um, yeah, good. Well, here we go. Here we go. We don't see you yet. Can, could you put louder in the screen, please? Um, I started my video. Uh, I, I, I think it's uh, uh, a bit late. Yeah, good. Yeah, here you go. Um, Hello everyone, uh, I'm Laura, I'm a journalist, I'm a social scientist, um, Bia already introduced me, uh, and I will present um, um, part of the challenge that we found with these consultations, um, and for me it's very important to, to explain that this is a work that came up uh, from the consultations. It's not exactly uh, the, the challenge I would choose by myself. Uh, 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 at the end of this process, uh, I was very uh, worried because there, there were some issues that is very important for me as a digital rights expert, uh, such as uh, privacy, uh, the uh, data treatment, uh, women about women or um, uh, uh, algorithm bias, uh, this kind of uh, issues. And the, the, these issues didn't come from, from the consultations. And I was worried, but talking with my colleagues, uh, we, we noticed that uh, this uh, challenge that we will present now, they talk about inclusion. Uh, and inclusion is uh, what is the need uh, of our country. It's, all, uh, it's the main issue in, in Brazil already. So uh, uh, there are a lot of issues that are missing, but this is the, the result of the process and we had to choose. Uh, we had to select uh, what, uh, what were the main, the, the main challenges. Uh, and the first challenge, uh, Bia, could you please put the, the presentation? Yeah. Could, you sh um, could you put a PPT as well, please? Yeah, go ahead, Lord, we're listening to you. Yeah, <laughs> and the main challenge, uh, the first uh, one of the main challenges uh, was about data. Uh, uh, we are proud uh, about the data we produce on internet access in Brazil. Uh, we, we have city that uh, has been producing uh, several uh, research uh, and surveys about internet access uh, and other issues regarding the internet. But uh, is it still lacking a, a, a gender approach for this for this data, and we have here a, a, a internet a international issue too because uh, uh, CETIC works with 
uh, the, the, the international uh, standards. And for example, the, the, the international standard for access to internet is to ask if the person had access to internet three, uh, three, three months ago. Uh, and if, we, if you take the case of a woman that have five, five children, and she uh, she has one mobile to divide with all the children and herself. Uh, in the last three three months, she had an opportunity to to uh, in, in, at one moment to to send a message to watch something at, at that mobile. Yes, she she probably have this opportunity. But is this access to internet? So this is the, the international standard. So uh, we have here uh, a discussion how we uh, um, establish a new standard internationally and to produce data in Brazil. Um, but this is just one example. CETIC is not the only organization that produces data on internet access or internet use. We have other institutions in Brazil that uh, uh, produce this kind of data, uh, the, the public institutions, for example, and we need all of them to produce uh, data regarding gender diversity and ICGs. Uh, the next challenge that we had identified uh, is um, develop public and private policies that promote diversity and equity in internet access, use, and development. Um, when we we, uh, we look to the, the data that I mentioned before, uh, we see that uh, there is no much difference uh, between uh, the men and women use and access to, to internet in Brazil. Uh, but this is, uh, as I said before, it, it can be a distortion uh, uh, of the, the, the standard that is adopted. Uh, but from the, the consultations, people said to us, this is an issue. Access to internet is still an issue for gender and the, in diversity in Brazil. Uh, this is not, uh, oh, uh, we, we have the, the, the same level, uh, we, we have connection with our mobiles and we are happy with this connection that we have. Um, and the next uh, challenge that we, we identified uh, was address gender and racial violence and different forms of oppression on social media and internet platforms. Uh, we, we, we have uh, uh, a situation that's very common uh, to be violent against human in, in, in Brazil uh, through social media platforms. Uh, and uh, we had several studies from SaferNet, from Internet Lab, from Coding Rights and other organizations, and uh, that is tracking the, the the violence against women in online, uh, and this is an issue because uh, sometimes it's difficult even to re register the violence uh, by the authorities because this is less harmful. Uh, and uh, sometimes the, the authorities, they refuse to register the, the, the issue. Uh, this is the, the beginning of, of the problem. And of course, we have all the, all the environments to, to, to support the, the women that are victims uh, of online uh, damage, uh, uh, online violence. Uh, the next... Uh, 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 the next uh, challenge that we had identified uh, is to, to ensure access to information and the exercise of freedom of accept, expression for women on internet. This challenge is related to uh, gender-based 
uh, disinformation, uh, and not only gender-based disinformation, but disinformation at all, uh, because we have a situation that we, you receive the, 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 the fake or the, um, the, 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 the fake news or the, um, the misinformation, and you don't have uh, a path, uh, you don't have a, a, a plan, a, a broadband plan, uh, you don't have access to check that information. Uh, and uh, you you stay with what you received from zero rating uh, um, uh, practice. So uh, this is one part of this issue. But if you if one on one hand we have the problem to have access to internet, and on the other hand we have the problem to express ourselves um since we we have uh, even the platforms having different um treatment of the content by women and by men uh we we have the this is also an international discussion uh, and you know that uh content by women several times a downgrade uh, and uh, the the same the same type of content by posted by men have uh, more propagation. So uh, finally, um, Gabi will share with me the presentation of uh, the, the the challenge. Uh, I, I will present this last one. Uh, is the 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 last one I will present is to promote policies with a gender equity and diversity perspective. Um, this challenge is related to have a gender uh, component, have a gender uh, as something that address all the issues related to ICTs and internet. We have several uh, public policies, strategies, such as uh, the Brazilian strategy for artificial intelligence, or uh, the Brazilian strategy for digital transformation. And these strategies, they don't have a specific view, a specific approach for gender and diversity. Uh, we, we, and this is not something only from the executive branch, but also the legislative branch. We, we had the uh, um, Marx review the internet, uh, the, the, the the Brazilian civil rights framework for the internet, uh, and uh, uh, it does it doesn't address gender issues, and we have several other views that are being discussed discussed in, in the the national congress, such as the the fake news and misinformation uh, view, and it doesn't address uh, gender anyway. So uh, I'll stop here and share the, 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 the presentation with my colleague, uh, Gabi. Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, I think that the people here on the room are not being able to read actually the challenge because the screen, they are, they've been, uh, the, the, the closed caption is, uh, it's on the, the, the this part of the data show. But anyway, I just just to request the, the challenge number one is to produce data that includes information on gender, race and ethnicity regarding presence and participation in the technology sector. The second one is to develop public and private policies that promote diversity and equity in internet access, use and development. The third one is to address gender and racial violence and difference and different forms of oppression on social media and internet platforms. The fourth one is to ensure access to information and the exercise of freedom of expression for women on internet. 
And the fifth one is to promote policies with a gender equity and diversity perspective. And now I give the floor to Gabriela Nardi to present the other five challenges that our consultation process has raised. Gabriela Nardi, she's a technical advisor of the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, and she holds a master degree in anthropology, focusing on gender studies and social studies of science and technology. She's also an alumni of the Brazilian the Brazil School of Internet Governance. Thank you, Gabriela. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Well, I will talk about the five uh, last uh, challenges that, that we were we collected during the, the consultations that we uh, presented before. Uh, the sixth one is build capacities for girls and women regarding ICT, consider intersectional perspective of class, age, race, sexuality, and persons with disability. Uh, I think this uh, talks about, uh, because when we usually talk about women in ICT, we end up talking mainly about white class women. So we wanted to, to go for, we, we believe we need to go further and acknowledge that there is a big variety of female experiences and, and perspectives. We need to include black women, indigenous women, trans women, women with disability and so on. And we have some data uh, that, that shows how the, the female ex experience are different from each of one of these groups. So for example, only, 0.02% uh, of trans women have access to university, which of course leads to a huge difficult to enter the job marketing. Uh, women, uh, young women are not aware of platform policies and features that could help uh, keep them safe. And of course, uh, language is, is a, bar a barrier for that because mo mostly of this content is in English. Uh, and we, uh, we know that in the STEAM area, uh, the, the, the completely rating courses like uh, computing, uh, engineer, and, and others uh, is significantly higher among, among males. Uh, among, uh, and while courses of, of education, health, and well-being, and social science, these numbers are higher among, among uh, women. Uh, just a second. Well. Uh, the next challenge is uh, uh, support and foster civil society initiatives that promote diversity within the internet ecosystem. Uh, in Brazil, uh, some of the most successful initiatives uh, for the inclusion of girls and women in technology, they came from civil society and academia. Uh, unfortunately, we have very few public policies regarding the inclusion of girls uh, and women in technology ecosystem. Um, so, uh, and when we talk about that, it concerns not only the, the need to ensure greater participant, participation and representation in the, in the traditional internet governance space, but to also to increase the spaces of representation, expanding the participation and space of debate related to uh, internet development. Okay. Uh, the next one is create a work environment that's favorable for women in internet and technology companies. Uh, the IT market, uh, which is well known, has, uh, has a very f uh, few per percentage of women work in workforce, about 20%. Uh, and this inequality, uh, we know that it does not necessarily indicate the lack of interest or skill, but uh, are mostly related to gender stereotypes and the need to, that need to be fought as well as harassment and, viol and violations that women suffer uh, in this environment. Um, but also we're not uh, talking only about the violence itself, but in the creation again of a work environment that are more friendly uh, and welcoming to, to women in a variety of aspects. Uh, and the, the lack of diversity uh, in the end leads to the repetition, to repetition and in the IT market, we believe, should uh, reflect the plurality, which is central to any innovation process. Uh, the next one is ensure gender and racial diversity in international governance space. Uh, in Brazil and in many other countries as well, internet governance space are usually most uh, uh, white male space. Uh, and for example, in CGRBR, uh, CGIBR itself, uh, we, we are doing a lot of uh, work right now to, to be able to improve the, these numbers. 
And we know that, that there is a, 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 some great inclusion, diversity, diversity initiatives like the youth program, uh, but, they are but, but we still need more and these are still not enough for, to, to address this, this challenge. And the last one is economic empowerment of women in the online environment. Uh, well, the lack of uh, women's financial autonomy is a critical problem in most part of the world. And of course, it's reflected in the digital environment. Uh, and uh, digital technologies can, can contribute to achieve the, the targets set out in the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030 by fostering economic growth. And for example, simply increasing access to high-speed broadband internet can accelerate economic growth by 1.5%. So uh, we have here a, a huge potential, potential to improve this reality of lack of economic empowerment for, for women. And in the uh, 11 emerging, uh, emerging economies, approximately 64% of working force women found that mobile phones improved their access to business and employment opportunities. So we believe that uh, digital technology can improve uh, uh, this reality for women. And this was the last uh, challenge. Thank you, everyone. Now. Thank you, Gabriela. Uh, so the idea of this process right now, after this, um, the three workshops that we're, we were organizing in Brazil, but also the international consultation that we were able to do online, and also what we want, would like to hear from you here during the IJF. Uh, all of these are going to be part of the uh, uh, document that is going to be published in Brazil, uh, listing these 10 challenges, and also we are now starting working to systematize somehow the 248 proposals uh, for actions that were elaborated and discussed um, during this process, during, the, this, the, during, during 2022, uh, to publish this agenda. The idea also is also uh, to contribute more for effective initiatives to promote diversity in ICT and internet governments, not, not only in the Internet Brazilian Committee, but also uh, in the civil society, in the public sector, in the companies, in the industry. So we would like you very much to hear from you about these challenges, and to hear uh, what kind of experience do you have, of especially women, what do you face in your countries related to uh, basic gender uh, discrimination and also the lack of participation of women in the internet governance spaces or in the market as well in the ICT sector in general. So I would give uh, the mic for those here who want to comment some anything or want to uh, ask some uh, to put questions, ask questions to Gabriela and Laura as well. And we also invite people that are following us online if they have any questions to, to raise, and then Luisa could help us with this. So, anything? Anyone? So, if, while we're thinking, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna ask a question for Laura. Uh, so, Laura, can you hear us? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. So, yeah. Do you want to make a question? So, I, I, I will skip mine then to, to prioritize the people that are here with us, and then I put mine. Could you please pass the mic, please? Thank you very much. Please introduce yourself. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, ASP Francis Ogweng. I'm a police officer from Uganda. I work with the CCTV. Uh, department, but also before that I was working with the Child and Family Department and uh, I am a, a gender equality advocate as well. I, I first want to thank you very, very much for the wonderful presentations. Uh, I, I want to just learn uh, from your experiences from Brazil because the, what I see in my country it looks like uh, the digital world now is creating a lot more gap between uh, the women and the men, between the rural women and the urban women, between uh, the elite and the, the women who have not gone to school. Because you realize that, uh, for example, in my country, 
the majority of uh, women have not gone to school. Majority of them don't have uh, smartphones, let alone the small mobile phones. That means majority of them don't, don't, don't have access to the digital economy, to mobile uh, money and so on and so forth. You talked about the brown and black women, uh, mobilization and movement. I was wondering, are they the elite group? Are they the underprivileged? Are they the poor women? And how were you able to mobilize them to capture this space and to have all this energy to be able to, 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 to participate in the digital economy? Then, then uh, what, what lesson can I learn and take home to these women so that we don't leave anyone behind? In the, in, the, in the digital economy. Then the, the, the final comment maybe is uh, also I see like policing, what we are doing as police now is also a lot to do with the internet. You want to access police forms, you need to uh, access it online. Certificate of good conduct, you have to access, access online. That also means even policing alone is also becoming a bit far away from those other women who don't have access. So I want to also hear from your experience in Brazil, how is policing being done to ensure that uh, the cyber crime space, no one is left behind, but also uh, these women, I want to talk about women as much as possible, have access to police, are being helped by the police and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Laura, would you like to answer, please? Yes. Um, thank you so much for, for, for comments and your, your question. Uh, I believe the, the context you gave about Uganda is exactly the motivation we had to build our uh, gender agenda in, in Brazil. Uh, we, uh, we identified that women and men, they don't, ha they don't have the main benefits from the, 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 the internet, from the knowledge society that we are building. And we have uh, not to, 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 to behave as anything is happening. Uh, we have to, to recognize that there are differences between men and women uh, when they are enjoying uh, the, 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 the internet benefits. Uh, and uh, there is a risk, as you said, that instead of uh, close the gaps between uh, men and women, uh, we have the, 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 the possibility that technology is deepening uh, these, these gaps. Uh, and, and reproducing the inequalities that we have in, in our society. Uh, this is our motivation. And the way that we, we found that as a, the Brazilian steering committee that we could contribute to, to not to reproduce, not to dip this, um, this gap uh, was to build this agenda. Uh, the idea of this agenda is to be an, an agenda of action. So we have identified the, the challenge. We have identified what we could do to tackle them. And then uh, uh, the next step is, okay, let's make the list of our homework uh, and let's address, uh, let's tackle these issues. Um, about the, the, the question uh, uh, about cyber, um, uh, cyber threats. Um, I, I think that this issue was uh, included in the violence lens. So uh, we we are seeing the online attacks um, that uh, a woman can suffer, like surveillance or uh, or uh, uh, malware we think that this is uh, a top that is it will be addressed by violence issues. Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, 
Any, any other from here? Otherwise, I will put a question now to Gabriela, since Laura has already answered one. Thank you very much for your participation. We are, as we mentioned before, we are editing a third publication uh, on gender and diversity on ICT. And uh, we have a, publish a public call for papers on this team. And Gabriela is one of the, the, the persons responsible for this process. So I would like to ask her to tell a little bit about it. Uh, because one of the things that was super interesting for us is to realize uh, during this process that is in this first phase as well, uh, in this first uh, phase yet, uh, how we, we noted that there is a lot of demand for space for women to talk about these topics uh, and to, to elaborate and to formulate on gender and ICT uh, issue. So, Gabriela, please. Uh. Um, as Bia said before, this is the we are working now in the in, in the third edition of the publication. The the first and the second one, they were the, the the authors were were invited, so we 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 asked pe people to write for us. And now this year, we for the first time, we we open we launched the open call for the community to participate, and we have 65 submissions. Uh, that were valid, that were valid, and we are very happy with this number because this was the first time, uh, and the quality of the material submitted to us was very good, very high. It was a very difficult job to to select uh, the ones that are going to to the next phase of the publication, and there there was an amazing variety of themes uh, also. And not just women, also a lot of men. Uh, and not just about gender, but about race and class and indigenous people. Uh, well, we have a, a variety of themes and we are very excited about what will come up in the end. And this process are, is showing us that there is a, a huge uh, demand in Brazil for more, more space to speak about it, for. Uh, to speak about diversity and inclusion in, in ICTs and, and the internet governance in Brazil. So uh, the, the, the next publication will be launched on April next year. And well, we are very excited to see what, what we will have in the end. Thank you. Unfortunately, we don't have yet the first and the second editions of our publications in English, yeah. but there's a, they, they will be soon available in English as well because there is a translation process ongoing. So I, we think that uh, soon we will be able to share with you all, all of this production and also from this third uh, publication as well. I would like also to take the opportunity to, to thank, besides Gabriela and Laura, that are very much implicated in this process, to mention uh, Professor Tanara Lauschner, which is another uh, member of the Brazil Internet Steering Committee, a professor from the University, uh, the Federal University of Amazonas in Brazil. Uh, she's a little bit sick. She's here in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa with us, but she's a little bit sick. That's why she didn't come to this panel, to this open forum with us, uh, but we hope she feels better later. Later, And also you, Luisa, uh, Luisa Mesquita, which is helping us with the uh, online moderation here. She's also a technical advisor from the, the CGI in Brazil, uh, which has helping us very much like uh, Gabriela to coordinate this process. And she tells me now that we have an online question. So I'll give you the mic so you can tell it. I'm, I'm waiting for the... You're waiting for the question? Okay, so somebody... Please, while that, uh, while you wait for the, the online question. Thank you very much. Introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Lito Ibarra from El Salvador. Uh, regarding education, I mean, uh, mostly university uni education for women, uh, we all know that uh, careers in the ICT uh, sector have been uh, multiplying a lot. I mean, there's a uh, a lot of specialization nowadays, like design, I don't know, 3D painting, whatever. My question is, have you identified if among all these 
career technical or professional or full grades or even masters, uh, are there any preferences? Of course, the, the final goal is that women uh, will go to, to all of these careers, all of these programs, uh, be that whatever, hardware, software, uh, networking, whatever. So, but, but have you identified specific programs that, programs that are uh, m mainly prepared by women nowadays? Uh, so you could, or uh, we could in our countries, stimulate or provide scholarships for specific careers that nowadays are more attractive for, for women. Have you identified those? Thank you. Thank you very much. Laura, could you comment, please? Um, uh, yes, uh, um, this, this was a, a challenge in that was divided in three, uh, in three ways in, in, in this uh, CGI's agenda. The first was capacity building, for, uh, that is education. Uh, uh, we, we, we have uh, a cultural behavior uh, that's something that is historic, historically established uh, that uh, uh, women do not choose STEAM careers. So they they have to be motivated. They, there there is a there is a challenge here. How do we uh, uh, how do we um, can foster uh, women in IT careers in STEAM careers? Uh, so uh, there are a lot of initiatives in Brazil uh, regarding this issue, uh, uh, but. Uh, at there, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of work to do uh, on on this issue. Uh, and the other way it, it it appears in our in our document is uh, one thing is education, one thing is capacity building. Uh, the other thing is uh, what do you do uh, when you 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 have a diploma, you 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 have the knowledge. Uh, you you need to have a work environment that is um, that is ready for 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 these women. So uh, in our document, uh, we will uh, address also the the the, the work environment and how and how women are taking part of the digital economy. Uh, and the other level uh, and the other challenge about this discussion is not only about education, uh, uh, work conditions, but also how can women be lead uh, in uh, business, in, in uh, how they uh, on, on, on on digital economy, how can how can they um, uh, uh, can be economically empowered uh, uh, in this context? So uh, these are uh, the way we are addressing these issues. Thank you, Laura. I, uh, the Brazil Internet Steering Committee is also organizing a hub there in Brazil to follow the IGF process, and people are gathered together there. So I think uh, we have a raised hand from there. Uh, they are from a remote participation. Could you open the mic for people that are in Brazil raising hand in our Zoom room, please? It's with the CGI logo, please. Can you open the mic for them? Bom dia. Good yes. morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, please. Go ahead and introduce yourself. 
Thank you, sorry for the technical issues. Uh, well, I'm Camila Leite. I'm a lawyer at the Brazilian Institute of Consumer Defense, and I have more of a comment than, uh, than a question, but I would like to praise CGI's initiative on uh, on developing uh, this, uh, this data about the, the challenges on promoting diversity, not only on a gender-based uh, discussion, but also in a, an intersection with other other, other diversity uh, fields such as race, ethnicity, uh, LGBTQ+, etc. And as a, as a comment, I would like also to praise uh, the initiative of developing this book on, um, on diversity. And I wrote an article uh, together with Maraisa Cesarino about uh, transgender issues on aut automated decisions made online especially facial recognition ones. And I think that this is a really important problem, but in Brazil, we also have this challenge of developing data and developing materials, uh, raising these issues, but in reality, uh, some, uh, some initiatives uh, still, um, uh, still uh, contradict uh, the the data that we produce. For example, in this week, we just had a how can we say it? Um, we had a licitation, a a public uh, a public purchase on facial recognition on facial recognition uh, technology uh, that could also affect trans people, that could affect uh, the, poor, the poorer people. And my comment and question is more, uh, how can we advance on that? The first step, as you mentioned, is producing this material, is, uh, is calling for more people to participate, but uh, in the government, we, we still uh, face this challenge. So how can we deal with that? I think that we we have a more open space with the new government, maybe, but uh, how can we advance on um, taking a step more than than in the the theory and coming to reality of what we can what we are producing in here? So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Camila. Is anyone there in the hub who wants to make? take have the opportunity to speak because we have only f three more minutes to close the session so if, he, if there is anybody there to want to to raise any topic or here in the audience we have another person that would like to share their initi initiatives please thank you Isadora. Oh, hello good morning everyone uh, my name is Diana I'm the CEO and founder of Programaria we are an initiative to bring more diversity in technology, in technology here in Brazil. And I just want to share something uh, that we are doing here, maybe to exchange experiences. And we, we understand that we have like a journey of women in technology and a lot of challenges depending on the step um, of their journey. So first we want to, to bring more opportunity to, to study opportunities. So we have an online course that has reached uh, 13,000 um, women here in Brazil, so we can make them understand that they can uh, participate in technology fields. We uh, have this um, <laughs> uh, we have this cultural narrative that women cannot participate in technology, that women are not good in math. So I think the first uh, issue, the first challenge is how can we uh, make them uh, feel that they they can be they can belong to technology you know and by providing opportunities that they can uh, they can uh, encounter like a, a warm environment and understand that it's okay to to make mistakes and um, how can they be connected with other women that are facing the same challenges and understand that it's not about like an individual uh, problem but a gender problem you know like uh, all the, the sexism and the challenge that they face um, in society and especially in uh, STEM uh, fields. So that's the, the one part of our job here in Brazil. And the second one is uh, precisely how we can develop the community. So we understand that it's very powerful to 
um, build like a community where, where they can be uh, supported in their challenge in, in this journey, you know. So we have, we hold events and opportunities to them to amplify their knowledge about technology to um, to um, get to, to know like women in technology because I think it's very important to feel represented in this field. And also we connect with companies uh, which are facing the, the challenge of attracting talents uh, in technology. I think it's a, a worldwide problem, the, the lack of um, professional professionals skilled in technology. So we understand that it's important to um, to make partnership with companies. And also, I think Laura talked a little bit about this, but it's important to um, understand how we can um, transform the environment in companies. So they understand that diversity is a, a strategic uh, selling point. Thank you. And now they, they, they have to change because it's not only about saying that they want to hire more women, but how um, they are doing things to, to, to incorporate those women exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I think it's very important to to discuss about um, activities that can help companies as well to to bring more women in tech. Thank you. Thank you, Ayana. Sorry to interrupt you, but we need to to leave the the room here for the next workshop. So thank you so much. I think that you brought very important. Uh, uh, topics related also uh, from the private sector that we need to foster uh, their their ongoing initiatives in Brazil, but we need to foster much more. That's the, the goal that we have with this agenda, as I mentioned before, not only for the civil society in the public sector, but the private sector and the academics and the university as well, how to deal with all this inequity that we still have in Brazil, but we think that this process, we hope that this process can inspire you all in other parts of the, the world as well to do the same. So we will, we will be very glad to share with you this document as soon as it's, it will be published and it will be published also in English and in other languages if we manage to translate them. Uh, and the idea is to permanently hold seminars and debates and activities besides our publication there is there is going to to be released once in a year uh once in a uh, one number per year and the idea is to contribute to this this critical thinking about gender exclusion and how to promote diversity on ICT sector so Laura if you wanted to uh, make your final comments in 30 seconds please and then I will pass to Gabriela do the same and we, f we will finish our open forum I just want to, to thank you all uh, for your participation and uh, uh, I hope to have uh, that we can make this a collective movement, a collective uh, um, agenda uh, of work. Uh, and I hope we can make the, the difference for the, the gender gap. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Gabriela, please. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank you, everyone, for being here and thank uh, everyone that, that is participating in the process that is involving a lot of different uh, women. And also here in, in the IGF, we are being able to, to connect with a lot of women with uh, great initiatives uh, all over the world. And we hope to be able to, to keep uh, going on with this project and involve uh, every time more and more women that are interested in, 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 in the inclusion and the, in the diversity agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriela. Luisa, thank you so much as well, and all the internet, the Brazil Internet Steering Committee team for helping us. Some of them are here, and also the members of the CGI who are supporting this process, because it's not, as you may imagine, in a board with 21 members and only four women, it's not easy to pass by, including the debate. So thank you so much, uh, and we hope to see you in the next steps of this adventure. Bye.